Okay, this is going to be a very exciting lecture because we're going to introduce probably the main object of study in linear algebra, which is linear transformations. Um, and I've always just found linear transformations to be really fun to work with, uh, so I hope you'll come away with that impression as well. Um, but before we talk about linear transformations, I'd like to talk about what I mean by a transformation in general, so um, or a function between vector spaces. So I'm going to use a notation. Um, so we're going to call a transformation T. And we're going to say that's going from Rm, let's say, to Rn. Okay, so what, is, what does this indicate here? So this indicates several things. Uh, sorry about that. So it indicates that. Well, so t is the function. So t is a function or a transformation uh, from so from our domain Rm, okay, to uh, the codomain Rn. Rn is not the range. Rn is the codomain. Uh, so let me. Let me talk about that really quick. So what is the difference? Um, so the domain, so the domain of, of the transformation is uh, our M in our example. And, okay, and then the, the range is, uh, let's do the codomain first. So the codomain is the entire space that we're mapping to. So the codomain um, is uh, Rn. And then the range is not the entire space. So the range is not necessarily Rn. Um, and we have another word that we often use for range. So you can also say the image. Okay, so the range or the image of a linear transformation is, what is it? It's the subset. So it's a subset of the codomain. Sometimes it's the entire codomain, but in general, it's just a subset. And what does that consist of? Um, consists of all vectors of the form um, let's call it y is t of x okay so for some x in for some x in the domain okay um so it's only the things in Rn that actually get mapped to by something in Rm. Okay, so I want to draw a picture of this. Um, oh, but before I do, I, I also wanted to find one more thing. So the image, we can talk about the image also of a single element. The image of um, just a single vector, x in the domain. What do we think that is? That's just t of x. So there are two ways that you can use the word image. You can talk about the image of a certain element, or you can talk about the image of the transformation, uh, the entire transformation, okay? The image would be all vectors of the form T of X, okay? That's the image of the transformation. Uh, so yeah, let's draw a picture of this. So here's my domain, here's my codomain, and let's say we have a bunch of points in a domain and maybe they're all mapping to some points here. And maybe some of them are even going to the same point. All right, so I only drew five of them, but maybe that one and this one are both going to that point, and this one's going to that point. This one's going here, that one's going there, that one's going there. This is my function t. You can think of it as just this mapping. Um, but then let's say that we only really map to points over here. Okay, so there's nothing out here that's getting mapped to. Um, and so the entire, this entire thing here would be the codomain. 
and this is the domain. Uh, but the range is just this part here, 40 image. Okay. And we would say the image of this particular element here is maybe that element there. Okay, so that's the picture to have. Let's do a few examples. Um, okay, so how about just a function from R1 to R1? We can do that. So what does it mean to have a function R1 to R1? Well, we're just mapping a single real, no we're mapping a real number to another real number, right? Um, so let's say this is defined by t of x equals x squared, okay? Turns out this will not be a linear transformation, but this is certainly a transformation. Um, okay, so our domain is R1. Our codomain is, so the codomain is, is R1, because that's the vector space that we're mapping to. But the range is not all of R1. The range is just, um, how do we say it? So it's all the, it's all the Y in R such that, well, if we square a real number, we can never get a negative number, right? Those come from squaring, uh, squaring imaginary numbers. So we can only get positive numbers by squaring uh, a real number, but we can get all the positive numbers and we can get zero as well. So the range is actually um, this, right? All the non-negative uh, real numbers. And you know, technically I probably should have said T of vector X with one component. <laughs> is a uh, vector x squared with one component, right? Because we're mapping vectors to vectors, but um, that's okay in this example. Um, also, what's the image of, of negative two? Uh, well, it just means what is two, negative two mapped to, right? So image of negative two is four. Okay. Time to talk about what we mean by a linear transformation. Okay, so. It's a very important definition. So we're going to start with a function. So linear transformation is in particular a function from Rm to Rn for some m and n. Um, okay, and so a function is a linear transformation if linear transformation if um, for every set of two vectors in my domain and every scalar C in the real numbers, the following two properties are satisfied. Okay. So here's my property one that I need. Okay. If I take the image of U plus V that should be the same as just taking the image of u and then adding the image of v. Okay. And then my second property, if I take the image of a scaled vector, c times u, that should be just the image of u then scaled by, by the scalar c. Okay. And so these properties taken together or would define a linear transformation. Okay, um, this is going to look a, a little bit um, abstract at first, but there's actually a very beautiful geometric picture um, for what's going on here, which we're going to talk about in a second. But before we do, I just want to get used to working with these two properties. Um, and, and there's actually one other thing to note. So note that uh, these statements, these two properties, actually implies some other things. So uh, the most obvious one is um, where would the zero vector get sent under a linear transformation? Well, it turns out it always gets sent to zero. Um, here's why. So for example, we could use the first property to explain this. Is what is T of zero? Well, I can write the zero vector as a sum of its, uh, as a sum with itself, right? <laughs> zero plus zero is still the zero vector. 
But the first property actually tells me that that has to be t of 0 plus t of 0. OK? So this equality came from, this is property 1. Property 1 above. Um, but do you see what we can do now? So we have t of 0 equals t of 0 plus t of 0. Let's just subtract t of 0 from both sides. And what we get is we get 0, this is a 0 vector, equals just t of 0. So that proves that a, a t of 0 has to be 0. OK. Um, OK. So let's look at some examples of a. Uh, um, actually, before we do that, let's look at some non examples. So, non examples. I think that's more instructive to start with, actually. So, what are some things that are not linear transformations? Here's one. Um, what if we map from R3 to R2? Okay. Um, so this linear transformation given by, um, so I have to tell you what happens to a vector, uh, with three components. So we're going from R3 to R2, so X, Y, Z. And now I had better write down a vector with two components. Okay. Cause we're going to R2. So let's say this is going to go to, um, X, Y, and then product X times Y and then Y minus C. Okay. So is this a linear transformation. Well, you can see that it does send the zero vector to the zero vector, so that's okay. Notice that we start with the zero vector in R3 and we end up with a zero vector in R2. Um, but does it satisfy the other properties? Well, um, this takes some playing around with, but um, here's one way to show this. So what if we do um, T of um, u plus v. So I'm going to choose u and v to both be this vector 1, 1, 1. Okay. So what is it if I, so I'm going to do it that way and I'm going to do it this way. Okay. I'm going to show that this one is something different than that one, which would make this not a linear transformation because in order to be a linear transformation, we need this to be true for every u and v in uh in r3 okay so what is this first one going to be it's going to be t of two 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 right i just add the vectors together now i'll use this formula so what do i get i get two times two which is four and then i get two minus two which is zero great so that one is four zero what's this one um i'll apply t to this vector which is one times one and then one minus one so i get one zero now I'll apply t to the same vector and I get one zero. But you'll see we get two zero, not four zero. So these are not the same. Which means this is not linear. Okay, so this is not linear. It's a transformation, but it's not a linear transformation. Okay, let's do one more non-example. Okay. And this one might be a little surprising to you. Um, so Here's example two. Um, let's do t from, um, what should we do this time? Maybe r2 to r2, defined by. Um, OK, so we'll have t of xy. And that will be, um, how do we calculate? Um, Let's do x plus y and then x minus y plus 1. How about that? OK, so that's my formula. So given a vector x, y, I get a new vector um, like this. Um, OK, how do we see that this is not linear? Well, it turns out it doesn't satisfy these two properties. You can find vectors such, such that these properties won't work. But there's actually an easier way. So note. And this is actually a good thing to check uh, right off the bat. So note that t of the zero vector, what is it? Well, it's 0 plus 0, and then 0 minus 0 plus 1. So it's 0, 1. Ah, oh, but that's not the zero vector. And 
And remember, a linear transformation must take the zero vector to the zero vector. So this cannot be linear. So again, not linear. Okay. Um, well, this certainly looks linear, right? These are linear functions. But it's somehow this plus one that's messing things up. Um, so let me give you an example of what a linear transformation looks like. So this is an example of a linear transformation. We're going to take the transformation. Um, let's go from R2 to R3 this time. It's for a little variety. Um, and I'll be defined by, and let me let me start trying to get in the habit of, um, rather than calling it XY, I'll just call it X1, X2. So that's what we were doing before. So T of X1, X2 equals, and I have to give a three component vector here, Right, because I'm going from R2 to R3. So my formula is going to be, I'm going to take minus X2 to be the first component, and I'll take X1 plus X2 to be the second component, and then I'll take four times X1 to be the third component. Okay. So this is a linear transformation. Um, but let's not take my word for it, right? Let's actually show that these two properties, these two properties here hold, okay? So, um, so let's uh, let um, my vector u be uh, u1, u2, and then v is going to be v1, v2. So I'm going to try to make my u's and v's look different. Um, okay, what do we need to show? We need to show that t of... Um, u1, u2, plus uh, v1, v2. We need to show that that's the same as doing this, doing it this way. t of u1, u2, plus t of v1, v2. Okay. So rd is going to be the same. Let's try calculating both of them. So this first one becomes t of u1 plus v1 just by vector arithmetic, and then u2 plus v2. And then what is this formula going to tell me? It's telling me I need to do minus the second one, so minus u2 plus v2. And I need to do u1 plus v1 plus u2 plus v2. And I need to do four times the uh, x1, four times this one. So it's going to look like that. And then what happens when I do it this way? So T of U1, U2 is going to be minus U2, U1 plus U2, and 4 U1. T of V1 plus V2 is going to be minus V2, V1 plus V2, and then 4 V1. And what do we get? Uh, well, you'll see that you know, we get the same thing. So these are the same. Okay. Um, are we done yet? Well, no, we need to check the second property, right? We also need to check this property here. So also, let's try that. What's T of, um, let's, let's do it this way. So I should have parentheses, I guess. So T of, you know, C times uh, U1, U2. What is that going to be? Well, we, can, we cannot assume that we can just take the C out. That's what we're trying to prove, right? So instead, I should write down, you know, what the formula tells us to do. So first of all, I mean, we can definitely multiply that scalar in, right? So we get CU1, CU2, just by vector arithmetic. And then what is the formula telling me? It's telling me I need to do minus CU1, uh, CU1 plus CU2. And then 4CU2. Okay. Um, but notice what we can do now is we can take that scalar out. Right? So I get C of uh, C times minus U1, U1 plus U2, and then 4U2. But what do we just write down? We just wrote down C times, what is this thing? It's just this formula, right? So it's just C of T times U1. 
uh, of uh, sorry c times yeah t of u on u two. So you see this is the same as that. So we just showed that um, t is linear. So um, this transformation t is linear. Okay. Great. Um, uh, before I talk about you know what, what what this property really means geometrically, I just want to point out something. So we could have written this in a very special form. So note, we can write um, I'm going to come back to this later. So we can write this linear transformation in the following way. Okay, so let me um, split this into two vectors. So one of them, I'll just have the x1 coefficients, which will be 0, 1, 4. And then I'll have the x2 uh, coefficients, which will be minus 1, 1, 0. Right? And you see, if I add these vectors together, I get this. Um, but yeah, we can write this as in our matrix notation, right? Because we have x1 times this vector plus x2 times this vector. So it's this linear combination. Okay, so we can write this linear transformation in a matrix form. And we're actually gonna see that all linear transformations can be written in this way, which is pretty cool. Um, so this is just a preview of what's to come. So next thing I'd like to talk about is the geometry of linear transformation. What does a linear transformation look like geometrically? Okay. Um, well, here's an example. So let's say this is my zero vector. Not sure what space we're in. Maybe we're in R2. Let's say I have a vector. Um, say I have a couple of vectors. So maybe this is vector U and this is vector V. Okay. Um, Let's say we apply some linear transformation T. And then let's say, again, here's my zero. So T must send zero to zero. Okay, we know that. Where does it send U? Well, we're not sure. It depends on the formula, right? But let's say it sends U up here somewhere. Let's say this is T of U. Then let's say it sends V down here somewhere. Okay, T of V. Okay. What if I drew the vector to you? So what would to you look like? It would go out twice as far as you, right? Can you tell me where to you will be sent under a linear transformation? Well, what is T of to you? What should that be? Well, this is our second property, right? T of to you should be two times T of you. And so what does 2 times t of u look like? It's just in the same direction as this one, but scaled by 2. Ah, interesting. So here's 2 times t of u, which is the same as t of 2u. It's t of 2u. Um, what about t of 2v? So where does 2v get sent? Well, same idea, right? It gets sent right here. T of 2v. Okay. Um, how about v plus u? Here's v plus u. Where does that get sent? Well, that's our other property, right? So T of u plus v is supposed to be T of u, which is that, right, plus T of v. So if I know where u and v get sent, that tells me where, t, where uh, u plus v has to get sent. It has to be, and I take u and then I add v, so I go down this direction along v, and there's u, there's t of u plus v. Okay. All right, so this, this is very cool. So you can do the same thing with, you know, t of, you know, for example, if we could take 2u plus v, and that has to get sent where? It has to get sent here. 
So sort of mapping this grid onto another grid. Okay, now if I, if I keep drawing this grid, I'm gonna get something that looks like this. Okay. So here's two u plus two v, and that has to get sent to two times t of u plus two times t of v, which is here. So this is the mental picture to have for a linear transformation. Um, and notice that the grid lines are staying sort of consistently far apart, right? So um, if these lines are equally spaced, these also have to be equally spaced, okay? And it's mapping these lines to other lines. Um, and that's, that's in some sense, I think, why they use the name linear transformation. It maps lines to lines. Um, okay, so I want to formalize this idea a little bit, but this is the picture to have when we're thinking about linear transformations. Um, okay, so I'd like to define what it means to be a basis, okay? Because I don't, I don't think I did that um, when talking about span and linear independence. So a basis for Rm, let's say, what is a basis? It's a set of linear, linearly dependent, sorry, independent, linearly independent <laughs> vectors, um, but not just any set of linearly independent vectors, they also have to span the space. So that also span Rm span rm okay and there's one special basis it's called the standard basis so the standard basis and we'll have to check that these are linearly dependent independent sorry and they also span um, but the standard basis vectors of rm are it's what the standard basis looks like. So I don't know what M is, but the first one is just one, zero, 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 and I have all zeros. Okay, I'll call this E1. And then the second one is zero, one, zero, 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 and then all zeros. And I'll be E2. Okay, and then E3 will have the one in the third spot. And I get all the way down to EM, and that has the one in the last spot, zero, one, like that, okay? And so you can probably convince yourself pretty easily that these will span Rm, and they're also linearly independent, okay? Um, okay, so what's the standard basis for R2? Well, it's just two vectors. The first one is one, zero, and the second one is zero, one. Okay. And again, we can call this one E1 and E2. That's the, tip, that's the standard notation. Um, okay, why are these so important for understanding linear transformations? Well, it's because of the following. So let's stick with R2 for now. So suppose we know, suppose I tell you um, what happens to the vector one zero and also what happens to the vector zero one okay what can you then tell me about this linear transformation just with these two pieces of data right so I, let's say i tell you where one zero goes and i tell you where zero one goes what can we say? Well, uh, we can say a lot. So in fact, we can say practically everything. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so we actually know everything that happens. You know, everything about this linear transformation. That's really amazing. So wh why, why do I say that? Well, here's why. So let's say I wanna know where some random vector a, b goes, okay? Here's what I can do. I can write that vector AB as a linear combination of these two. How do I do that? We did this in a span lecture. It's just A times this one plus B times this one. Right? 
That's the way to write AB as a linear combination of these vectors. Um, and now do you see what we can do? Let's use the properties of linearity. So I can write this as t times this plus t times that, and then I can take out the scalars. And so I get a times t of 1, 0 plus b times t of 0, 1. Okay, so so look, I've written this in terms of just t of 1, 0 and t of 0, 1, right? So if we know these two things, we know what happens to any vector under our linear transformation, okay? And in general, if we know what happens to the standard basis vectors under a linear transformation, we know what happens to any vector, okay? So let's draw a picture of this. So let's say, um, yeah, so I've got use my little grid lines here. So I have 1, 0, and 0, 1. And um, we're going to do a linear transformation. And uh, let's suppose we know what's happening to these vectors. So suppose t of, uh, sorry, t of um, 1, 0 is going to be 2, 1. And let's suppose that t of 0, 1 is going to be, um, will be kind of easy to draw, negative 1, 1, let's say. OK, um, and let's say we want to know what is t of uh, 3, comma 2. What's that going to be? Well, I can draw a really nice geometric picture here. So let's say, so here's my zero vector. Let's say my zero vector is here. One zero gets sent to two one, so that's here. Uh, zero one gets sent to this one, negative one one, okay? And so let's say I wanna know what happens to this vector, three two. Well, see, what we're doing here is we're saying we're writing that vector as 3 times this one plus 2 times this vector. Okay, so it's like we have a grid here. And then where is it going to get sent? It's going to be sent to 3 times this vector. So 3 times this one. That's going to look like this. Um, plus 2 times this one. Ooh, I'm... I'm kind of running up into this line here, but yeah, it's going to look like this. Okay, so here's my grid. Okay, so it's going to end up at that point right there, whatever that point is. Um, we could try to count the squares to figure out what that point is, but let's just do it mathematically. Um, Let's just do a calculation. So how do we figure out what this um, this vector is? Well, by our formula here, it's, what is it? It's three times t of one zero plus two times t of zero one, which is gonna be three times, um, three times two one plus two times Negative one one. Okay. Um, and what's that going to be? It's going to be uh, let's see six. Uh, what's this top entry going to be? It's going to be a four, right? Six plus negative two, and I have a three plus two is five. So that should be the point four comma five. Okay. Um, one other thing to notice here. What is happening to a general vector AB um, under this linear transformation? T of AB, what is that? Well, it's going to be three uh, sorry, A times T of one zero, which is this, two one, right? Plus B times, t of 0, 1, which is, we're told is negative 1, 1. 
And notice we can write this in a matrix form. Okay, so this is where the matrix comes from. So this is uh, 2, 1, minus 1, 1 times my scalars A, B. Okay. So this right here is the matrix of the linear transformation. And how do we form the matrix of the linear transformation? Well, let's look column by column. What is this column? that column is the image of one zero. So this column is just T of one zero or T of E one, right? And what is this column here? That is T of zero one, okay? Or T of E two. So if we know what happens to the basis vectors, we can immediately write down the matrix associated with the linear transformation. And then we actually get the formula, right? <laughs> Um, for yeah, what to do. So I just want to um, I want to go back to a previous example and show how we can write down this matrix. Um, notice we already wrote down a matrix here, right? For this linear transformation, I want to show you another way to do it. So, so let's say what is the matrix? Of this linear transformation, T of x one x two going to uh, minus x2, so this one had three components, and x1 plus x2, and 4x1. Okay. Um, well, what do we have to figure out in order to write down the matrix? We need to know what T of, what are our basis vectors? What space are we starting in? We're starting in R2, right? So our basis vectors are one, zero, and zero, one. Okay. So where does one zero get sent? One zero gets sent to, well, I'm just plugging them in here. So zero, um, uh, one, and then four, right? And then where is zero one getting sent? It's going to negative one, one, zero. Okay, so actually we can write T as, so here's, Here's my matrix notation. So T of x1, x2 can be expressed in this way. It can be expressed as the matrix 0, 1, 4, right? This is the image of E1, and then minus 1, 1, 0. That's the image of E2. Okay, and I just multiply by x1, x2. Okay, so that's another way to write down the matrix of a linear transformation. And if you give me a matrix of a linear transformation, let's say you give me this matrix, I can, the first thing I see in this matrix is, ah, 0, 1, 4, that's where the vector 1, 0 gets sent, okay? And negative 1, 1, 0, that's where um, the vector 0, 1 gets sent, okay? And you can, you can immediately start to visualize a lot about a linear transformation just from knowing where these basis vectors get sent. Um, so for the rest of this lecture, I'd just like to do um, a few examples of some specific linear transformations. Um, just some pretty pretty cool examples. So first, let's do um, let's do some two-dimensional examples. Let's do a reflection across an axis. Let's say the y-axis. This is a two-dimensional example. Okay. Let's see if we can write down a linear transformation that, that that does this. Okay, so well, I mean, we we can we can pretty much immediately write it down. Right? So, what should t of x comma y be? Okay, well, if I'm reflecting across the y-axis, my y-coordinate should stay the same, right? But my x-coordinate should be negative, so it should be this. That's my transformation. Um, notice I'm writing them in row vector form this time, not column vector, but um, uh, sometimes you see this notation. So let's see what's going on here. So uh, can we write this down in a different way? Maybe. Um, so let me draw my two axes here. Okay, so um, 
let's just take a look at our two basis vectors. One, zero, our standard basis vectors. One, zero, and zero, one. Where should one, zero get sent? It should get sent here, right? If we're reflecting, it should get sent to minus one, zero. So one, zero should go to minus one, zero. That's what I'm gonna put in the first column of my matrix. Where should zero, one get sent? That stays, right? That stays in the same place. Okay. And so I've just written down everything, <laughs> right? Because where would two zero get sent? Well, that will get sent to, that's already controlled by this, right? It's, it's two times this, so it should get sent here. And this point should get sent here. Um, so I've described everything just by what happens to these two basis vectors. And you'll see, we actually get the same formula here because when we multiply this out, we get x times this vector plus y times that vector, but that just ends up being negative x, y. Okay. So that's a reflection across the y-axis. That's what the matrix is going to look like. Let's do a more complicated one. Let's do a rotation um, by some number of degrees. <laughs> so let's do theta degrees. You might be suspicious that this is even going to be linear, right? Um, but yes, it turns out this will be linear. Um, let me draw a picture. So I'm gonna make it, um, I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger this time. So, so let's say, um, you know, these, these grid lines here are not uh, one every time. So let's put one zero here actually, and then zero one will be here. So, Let's see if we can write down this rotation just by what happens to the basis vectors. Okay. All right. So, um, what if we want to rotate by, let's say, this much? Say this is my theta. Okay. And I guess I have the unit circle here. Okay. So, we're going to rotate by theta degrees. Well, how do we do that? So we want one zero to get sent here. This is what I want my T of one zero to be. Um, can we write down what those coordinates are in terms of theta? Hmm. Um, this should be one, right? Because it's a unit circle. Well then, ah, that means this should be cosine theta, right? And then this one here, what should this be? That should be sine theta. Okay, right, because cosine theta is, is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, but the hypotenuse is one, so it's just the adjacent. And sine theta is this one. So T of one comma zero should be cosine theta, sine theta. Um, so let's start writing down our formula. And again, I'm going to write this in the matrix form. So T of X, Y is going to be, what's my matrix? So one zero gets sent to cosine theta, sine theta. So that's my first column in the matrix. Where does zero one get sent if it's a rotation by theta degrees? Um, well, we can continue drawing this over here, right? So zero one should get sent, um, so we have to sort of flip this triangle here, right? So here's my theta again. Well, then this was sine, so this should be negative sine, I guess, right? Because it's going this way. And then this right here should be cosine. So this actually gets sent to, zero one gets sent to negative sine theta, and then cosine theta is my y-coordinate. Okay, so I claim that this matrix I just wrote down encodes the linear the rotation by theta degrees. Okay, so let's do a specific example. So what if we wanted to rotate? So rotation by um, so in radians, so pi over three radians, or in other words, sixty degrees. I don't need to write the word degrees, so that's what that symbol means. Um, okay, so what would our linear transformation be in that situation? 
what it'll be uh, cosine of pi over 3, which is half. Sine of pi over 3 is square root of 3 over 2. Then this should be minus square root of 3 over 2. And then half again. And you should check this. Try, try it out. Plug in a point x, y. Calculate this out. And what you get should be your point rotated 60 degrees around the origin. So very, very cool. And you know, we can write this in a more simplified way if we want. right? So um, it's x times this vector plus y times that vector. So the first entry is going to be 1 half x minus square root of 3 halves y. And my second entry will be square root of 3 over 2 x plus 1 half y. Okay, so that's my formula. And yes, this is a linear transformation. Um, Okay, what next? Um, let's do an example that that starts in R3 and then goes to R2. So this will be a projection. Projection from R3 to R2. I don't know about you, but I, I just think it's really fun figuring out these, uh, these matrices for linear transformations. Because again, all you have to think about is where are the basis vectors getting sent. Okay, so... Um, Let's say we have three-dimensional space. We want to just project everything down to, to here, to two-dimensional space. Okay, so like if I have a plane up here, that's just gonna get flattened down to that plane. Okay. Well, um, this should be, what's it going to be? We can just think geometrically to figure out the formula actually. So t of x, y, z, let's say this is x, this is y, and this is z. Well, if we're on this plane already, we're not changing anything, right? Um, if we're off the plane, the x and the y coordinate are staying the same, but the z coordinate is becoming zero, right? So I'm going to 2d, so I only need to put two coordinates here. So it'll just be x, y, and I ignore the z coordinate, okay? Whatever the z coordinate was, it's now collapsed down to just a yeah, zero, so... This is from R3 to R2. What is this going to look like in matrix form? Okay. Well, what's happening to the vector 0, 1? And what's happening to the vector... Or, sorry. What's happening to the vector 1, 0, 0? And what's happening to the vector 0, 1, 0? Um, okay, well... Here's, here's what's happening. Let me, let me write out what vector I'm thinking of. So I need to figure out what happens to that vector and what happens to this vector and what happens to this vector. I'm in R3, right? So I have three standard basis vectors. Um, 1, 0, 0, that's just going to stay where it is, right? But I lose my Z coordinate. So I'm going to get 1, 0. And then this one will go to 0, 1. And then this one will go to 0, 0, right? Because this one was pointing up here before, and now it just gets flattened down to 0. Okay, so this is my matrix form. I have x, y, z this time. And you'll see that this is the same as, as this formula here. Okay. Um, let's do one more example. So, um, And there's some more I want to talk about in linear transformations, with linear transformations, but I'll do that in the next video. Um, so let's uh, consider... And maybe this will be sort of a segue to the next video. So consider the linear transformation. Given by T of XY, I'm going to give you the matrix. Is 1, 2, negative 2, negative 4 times XY. Okay. Here's a question. Is this vector here, 3, 5, in the range or the image of my linear transformation. Okay. So in other words, i.e., is there a solution to this equation. 1, 2, negative 2, negative 4 
times xy, can I take some linear combination of these two vectors and get 3, 5? Oh, well, this is a familiar question, right? This is just a linear system. We're also asking, by the way, is this in the span of these columns, right? Is 3, 5 in the span of 1, 2, and negative 2, negative 4? And how do we solve that? Well, we just uh, write down the augmented matrix. So 1, uh, negative 2, 3, and 2, negative 4, 5. So this is an augmented matrix. That means we have this vector over here. And then let's do the row reducing. So this second row, I'll subtract two copies of the first row. But then I get 0, 0, and negative 1 here. You see we, we have an inconsistent system. So the answer is no. This vector is not in the range of t. Okay. So this is actually an example of a linear transformation where the codomain is not the same as the range. Okay, and we can see what's going on visually. So let me uh, just sketch this out really quick. Um, okay, this will be the last thing I'll do in this lecture. So where is one zero getting sent? It's the first column, right? So it gets sent to one, two. And where is zero one getting sent? So see, zero, one zero goes there. And zero one is going to negative two, negative four. That's down here. So you see what's happening here? Both these vectors, both these basis vectors are sort of getting collapsed onto this line here. And it turns out what, hap what happens is that, that, that actually causes every vector to get collapsed onto this, this, uh, this blue line here. Okay, because we can express any vector as a linear combination of these, but both of those are getting collapsed onto this line. So every vector actually gets collapsed down onto this line. So this is an example where the range of this linear system is just sort of the points along this line, not all of R2. Okay. So in the next lecture, we'll talk about what it means for a linear transformation to be one-to-one -one or onto. So I'll see you then.